Okay, there's a problem I quite liked more than the entrance test from last week. Um, it's just a visualisation problem. So we have some 3x3x3 three by three by three cube, and we have what we can see from each of the directions. So over here, we have, if we're looking at it from the right-hand side, what can we see? Here's from the front, and here's the, the plan it's from the top. Now, uh, the spaces here represent, if you were to look through, you would see nothing. So there aren't any cubes, say, go, if you look from the right-hand side, through the middle of it, it's all empty. The X's indicate that if you looked through that direction at some point along the cube, you would see a cube filled in. But you're not sure whether it could be all three of them, or maybe it was in one of them, we don't know. Uh, the question was to determine how many cubes are there in this thing. And it gave us a whole lot of options. Um, I quite like this sort of thing. It, people naturally are quite bad at visualising these kind of things. So making some sort of picture is usually the way in. What we're going to do is we're going to try drawing a 3D representation of this so we can get our hands on the insides of the problem. So, if I try drawing out a cube, we're going to have... And I'm going to divide it so into its three by three bits. So we've got this. Okay. Well, we can represent the same data that we had over here onto this thing now. So from the front, we have x, 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 that kind of shape. The right hand side has a very similar thing, x, 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 and then from the top, this. Now we have this, we have some way of representing, uh, we have some way of um, working through the answer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out uh, three tables over here, and they're going to be each of the layers. Okay, so I've given myself three layers here. So this is going to be the bottom slice, it's going to be going through this way, this is the middle slice, and then we've got the top slice over here. Doing the spaces is going to be easier than doing when the actual cubes are. So immediately, if we look at, say, this one here, this one here, and this one here, we know that all three of these cubes have to be empty for that to be a space. So on the top layer, that one, that one, and that one have to be empty, which I'm going to put them as zeros and ones. So zero means there isn't something. Similarly, these three across here have to be empty. So zero, zero. And that one there, which would be layer two, should be there, there, there. Okay, that's those represented. Similarly, going across, we know that all three of those are going to be empty. That just adds in one zero. That one there adds in another one like that. And that one there would be on this layer. And then finally, from the top view, we've got a, a big block of four of them missing on all four of these. So those ones are missing, these ones are missing, and on the bottom layer, these ones are missing. Cool. So, we've done all the empties so far. Right. Well, the most filled in one so far is this one, layer three. We need to consider that square there. If we look at this square here, we know that both that one and that one have to be empty, so this one must correspond to that one, but that one is definitely filled in. Similarly, uh, let, let's look at some of the layer twos now. We've got that x there, which means somewhere along here we've got um, a block. Well, these two are empty, that one must be. And almost exactly the same logic with that one there, means one of these three has to be filled in, so it can be that one there. I'm going to leave this space for a minute. Let's look at the bottom layer. Uh, the bottom layer, that one and that one force that one and that one straight away. Similarly, that one and that one force that one and that one. Like These things weren't obvious until we had the 3D picture. They're not obvious looking at these, but now we've got a way. These last two spaces, this is where we have to do a bit more thinking. Mo 
most of these x's are already accounted for. We haven't accounted for that x there, but we've accounted for all the other ones on the top. On the side, well, we've accounted for that one, we've accounted for that one, that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. In fact, that whole side's done. Let's look at the front. So the front, we have that one, that one, uh, we have all of them. So fine, the only x we have to account for is that one there. Now we've got uh, two spaces. Um, if either one of them is filled in, then it will account for that x. Now in this problem, if we had this one filled in, but not this one, we get a shape which wasn't quite connected. Um, whereas if we have one there, we get a nice connected shape. So I don't know how the question was originally formed. If it does want something connected, it has to be at least this one, and maybe this one as well. So the answer to the question, how many cubes is it, is eight or nine. I, I've made the same thing as before. So with this one here, this is the completed thing. So uh, from the front, you have that shape. From the side, you have that shape. And from the top, you have that shape. Um, but notice this one isn't needed. You get exactly the same shapes coming through. There, uh, there, and there, without it. If this one was here, but this one here was not, then we have something disconnected. I don't know how the question was called. It was given to me by a student. But the answer is still 8 or 9. Um, we just have a different one filled in. Cool. That's it.